One of my first drum teachers taught me that to be a working drummer, you need to have one or two go-to drum beats for whatever style of music you're playing. So with disco, this is my top three drum grooves that I think any drummer should know when it comes to this style. Now with disco, I kind of came up, I kind of stumbled upon it. My first gig that I got was when I was 19 and I got a full-time house gig on Bourbon Street uh, at a place called The Famous Door on the corner of Conti and Bourbon. And whenever, this is, this is my hand signal for a corner. And whenever I got that gig, I had not heard any of that music. Like I was a 19 19 year old punk rocker. I had listened to nothing but pop punk and, and that type of a style of music. So I came in and what is this disco? The guitar player, I remember him asking me, he's like, what do you listen to? Because I didn't know any of the songs on their set list. I'm like, bro, I don't listen to any of this. This stuff was way before my time. But I can honestly say that that gig is responsible for getting my groove together. The reason is, is it was considered a dance club. So all the music was danceable, especially this type of music. The reason this music was so popular was because it was just this dance, this dance movement. They had Soul Train. They had, this was a time of bell bottoms. Like they dance to this music in clubs. So to get it correctly and to play it correctly, we have to make it groove. I can't encourage you enough, go play along to the recordings that I'm gonna reference in this. All right, so let's get here to the prototypical disco groove. It's gonna be 16th notes on the hi-hat, what we call four on the floor, so it's gonna be quarter notes, one, two, three, four. And it's gonna be two and four on the snare drum. You can hear this groove in a variety of songs, but one of the more popular ones would be the song YMCA. Now, if we want to do a variation of that, we can still play four on the floor here, two and four on our snare drum, 16th notes here on the hi-hat, but what's going to happen is we're going to, eat, we're either going to either accent the upbeat or we're going to open the hi-hat on the upbeat. That's two different variations that are really common in the style and you'll run across those. All right, so practice all of them and some of them you may use on a verse and then you may change a little bit. So accent the upbeat or open the hi-hat uh, when it comes to the chorus. That's the way that they treated a lot of these to give these songs movement. For the second groove, it's really just a dumbed down version of that first groove for faster tempos. You see the tempos with these songs would fall within certain tempo ranges and there were certain grooves that would go with those tempos. That wasn't just by chance. Those are more danceable tempos. So this groove you can hear on uh, songs like, let's see, uh, which one of them? You can hear it on Disco Inferno. You can hear it on Car Wash. You can hear it on Staying Alive. You should be dancing. They're all going to have this type of a groove to it. And it's simply this. It is four on the floor, two and four on the snare drum, and then one of two ways that we can approach the hi-hat. We can either play eighth notes and accent the upbeats, or we can simply play the upbeats, okay? So instead of playing one and, it would be kick drum and, kick drum and. So I'm going to demonstrate those for you.
I would also encourage you, don't dismiss these as just easy grooves. Anytime you see a, a set of grooves like this from that disco era replicated time and time again, we should pay attention to that because that's an important groove in the vocabulary of drumming. And these are replicated over and over. You see a lot of indie bands these days using those same type of grooves to put into their music. It's, it's cross genres. It's not just disco anymore. So you can apply these in a variety of situations, even if you're in a current band. You got a quicker tempo song, you really want people to move to it or, or whatever that situation may be. Apply it as you see fit, but they're not just like stuck in the 70s. This last one is again a variation on the first, but you can see this on, uh, let's see, That's the Way I Like It by Casey and the Sunshine Band, I'm Your Boogeyman. Those are both by the same artist. Uh, it's gonna be 16th notes on the hi-hat, and the thing we're gonna change is the kick drum. Still two and four on the snare drum, but the kick drum is now gonna do this pattern. It's gonna go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. That's another variation that you would see, especially with Casey and the Sunshine Band. He tended to use that a lot. Now, we can also have a variation of that third groove. So we can accent the upbeats and do that kick drum pattern, or we can lift the hi-hat on the upbeat. So just use those for bridges and choruses and verses, and use them interchangeably so that you can take and, and add movement to whatever piece you may be playing. I can't stress enough, it's really important you take these grooves and you play along to some of the recordings that I've told you about and also just to that style in general because that's gonna give you the pocket or the feel that you need for that type of music. All too often we see a groove, we're like, oh, that's easy, I got, I got that. But you don't have the feel, so you wanna get the feel with it. Hopefully this lesson has helped you. If it has, click that like button, share it with another drummer you think it might help. But whatever you do, I'll see you here in the next video.